Hello everyone, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Welcome to VBA Beyond Basics. In the last lecture, I gave you a quiz. I hope everyone has done it and scored good marks because it is very important that you go through each and every MCQ and understand the answer. Why you need to understand the concept behind the answer. So if you haven't done it, I urge you to go back and try to understand each and every MCQ because that is conceptual and that will help you a lot. So let's go to today's agenda. Today we are going to do, discuss how to run a macro from within another macro and how to pass the variables. First of all, let's recap what we have talked about so far about the macros and the functions. So far what we have discussed is that how to how to run a function from macro and how to call and how to call a worksheet function function in a macro but with these what we have done is we have also transferred some values with use of a variable. When we defined a function, in the brackets we defined few variables. That variables were called through a macro. Now, what we are going to do, we are going to run a macro, another macro, from within this macro like the like we have ran the function the the customized function we built we coded in VBA likewise we are going to run a macro from another macro so let's do it so here we have our Excel and let's look at our and yeah you can see this okay let's insert a module insert a module and then start typing sub so let's call it caller and create another macro and call it runner okay so in runner we have range a1 dot value is equal to excel and here from caller we want to run our macro which the name is runner so how we are going to do it it is very simple just write the name of the macro that's it the runner so let's run this i am doing it with help of f8 key so run and if you look at range a1 you will find Excel return and if I press F8 now it will go back to macro caller. So let's do it again. First let's clear A1 and see when I run this macro from the runner it will jump from the caller my cursor will jump to the runner and the macro will run. What if I have another macro? So we runner 2 
range b a two का a two would be better a two dot value is equal to next macro macro and from after v runner I can have v runner two so I'm calling two macros from the my first macro and let's run this you cannot see the, yeah now you can see so let's run it so a1 is excel going back to the main macro and then going to the runner 2 macro pressing the fade key and then going back and that's it so it is very simple you can call whatever macro you want to call from your own macro so uh, we ran the macro with shortcut key uh, from the menus from the macros list uh, 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 we assign macro to a certain uh, button use uh, form controls from the form controls and uh, now we have ran a macro from within another macro so if I go to this macros I have three macros I don't want that every macro be available to the user I want these two macros runner and runner 2 that these should only be ran from another macro and user should not be able to even see them so this is very simple before the word sub write private private this means that this macro will not be listed and the second will also be private so th these are not listed so anything which is not private is public and you can uh, have public without writing public with it so when I write public with these and if I go to my macros you can see now I only have one macro that is the caller so if I cancel this and I, if I delete this and run my macro caller I have Excel and next macro so the private macros will not appear in macros list and but they can be called from within another macro I hope this is clear let's move to our next agenda for today and the next agenda is about the variables this is my my macro one let's make it a block and this is my macro here it comes macro 2 so what I want to do is I want to exchange values so I can run macro 1 from macro 2 but in addition to that I want to send some data from macro 2 to macro 1 and likewise I want to some send data some data from macro 1 to macro 2 can this be is is this possible yes this is possible like everything is possible in Excel until unless proven otherwise but we have done this when we called our function from a macro We, we didn't only call the function we also pass some value to the function and that function did some calculation on this data and then returned a new value to the, our macro so likewise let's go and try to transfer values from in between those macros So let's amend this these macros and let's say we have uh, what we have we have one 
macro who will send value and other will receive it so let's rename it to sender and let's call this let me get rid of private also just call this receiver okay and let's delete this also so we don't have these commands and we also don't have this command so let's send value to receiver so we receiver and let's send a value of let's say 90 okay and let's tell receiver to write this value to a certain cell cell a1 range a1 dot value is equal to is equal to what is equal to catch so we want receiver to catch something and how to catch that thing we are going to define a variable within the brackets this is this we haven't done yet with the macro but we have done this with the function when we created a customized excel function we used this, these brackets and we defined variables optionals and non-optionals so here I have defined that receiver will have one variable which is not optional and that value will be saved in range A1. So when the sender macro sends a value to the receiver that is 90, that 90 is stored in vcatch. Let's move our mouse over vcatch and we can see that vcatch is equal to 90 so v receiver has received that value and stored that value in the variable which is vcatch and let's run it f8 f8 and f8 and we have that a1 with 90 value can we do some calculations sure let's add 10 to this and let's run it again I'm going to run V sender. It will send 90 to V receiver, and V receiver will save that value. Do some calculation and save that value to A1. What if now get it reverse? I want to send value from receiver to the sender. It's very simple. Uh, in receiver, I would write V sender and some variable some value let's say 34 34 but I, instead of this sending this i we have already done this this command v receiver 90 is doing the same thing what i want is that sender tells receiver that i am expecting a return also a value in return also i am sending you 90 but I am expecting that receiver will send something back, will send me something back. So let's do it. How to do it? Let's say range a2 dot value is equal to what? Is equal to what there need to be something let's say let's define a variable uh, returned okay and let's say we say returned with the receiver I am telling receiver that there is a variable called returned. I'm sending you that variable. Catch it. Do some calculation and send me back. So let's see what happens now. What is the value of returned right now? Empty. We, we haven't assigned any value. 
So I am sending a variable without any value and catch is empty. So catch is empty plus 10. So a1 is 10 and I am getting back and a2 is equal to empty and that's it. I haven't received anything. Why? Think about it. Why? So if I assign a value we returned is equal to let's say 76 and then I will call this and then I will run this. So if I assign a value 76 and then send it. So v catch is 76. A1 is v catch 76 plus 10 and sub. And what is the value of v returned? v returned is 76. Why? Because v returned was 76. Here it is 76 and end sub is 76. Why aren't we getting 86? Because 86 is being saved in a cell. So if I say v catch is equal to v catch plus 10, what will happen then? Let's run it. Let's delete this. So and run this. So I'm sending 76. V receiver is catching 76 exactly. Now the catch is 76 plus 76 plus 10 and that is 86. What has been returned? V return is equal to 76 not 86. Right? Let me put it. Okay. This is going to save in A2 and this is A2 is 76 and sub. So we have 76. Why? Because to get a value back we need to use another function and that is call. So when I am running I'm going to run a macro from within the macro and I want to receive back not send not send I want to receive back a value in that case I have to use a function call call with the call sign I am calling a value from the macro I'm going to run so if I run this let's say f8 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 I have sent 76 76 plus 76 is equal to 10 and going back what I have received it's 86 let's run this 86 so with the call function what I can do I can receive my value back so, so far what we have done is we have ran a macro from with another macro. I have sent a value to the other macro and I have received back a value from another macro. So, I think this concept will be clear to everyone. Let me draw this too. So, this is my... Uh, this. So this is my macro 1. This is going to call macro 2. This is the call is simple. You need to name it. You, you say macro 2 and it will be it will be called it will run and if i want to send a value send send value how to send a value a simple macro and in the within the brackets you need to define a variable 
or a value you can send the bus simply uh, uh, typing a value to but in this macro 2 you should be ready to catch to receive a value to receive a value you need to have you need to define macro 2 macro 2 with a variable and that is let's say chair and if I want to receive back the value I have to say receive value back for this I have to do call macro to and then again a variable and this the second macro this one has to do nothing it will whatever the value of chair will go back to macro one so this was the whole concept I hope that this will be clear in your minds and I would suggest that do some practice uh, send value receive value send multiple values uh, receive multiple values and use the optional variable like we did in uh, uh, while we were creating a function so use variables and with the macros uh, uh, variables within the brackets after the macro name and uh, try to use the optional variable do some calculation and send them send it back and now you know how to display a message box try to display that uh, received value in a message box so i hope this will be clear and helpful so till next time